what to do when you arrive at a location and it's totally overcast. Do you go home, drink some tea, watch some telly? Let's talk about it. Well, I don't mind the slow down anymore. I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor. I don't mind selling out or playing cover song. Just as long as friends and family sing along. I don't need more money or faster car no. Today I was not sure that I'm going to leave home because like for three times I took my backpack, took my things, took my tripod, took my camera and started out of the door and in five minutes the light was gone then after five minutes after that the light came back so in the end I risked it but as you can see everything is just gray there's absolutely no light so what to do in a situation like this there are basically only two options when you have run out of luck and the weather is just not on your side the first one is that you just go home watch some telly drink some tea if you be with your family play a console game edit your old images the second option is you just go with the flow and you try to get the best that you can out of uh, that situation and trying to just to reconfigure your thinking how you shoot and what to actually shoot as today i'm on a beach i'm kind of uh, in luck because even without colors a beach uh, scenery or a composition on the beach with water and rocks and uh, some vegetation is a lot better than being on a field with just no light and dim grass. First things first, look around and look what's actually available to you. Do you have any interesting subjects? Look at the water, how it's moving. Is there a lot of wind? Are there water splashes? when the waves are hitting the rocks, for example, on the beach. Look for anything that can fit into a composition that doesn't need that much interest in the sky. Let's find our own brand of for my first composition, I found a really interesting subject for me. And it has all the things that I just mentioned. It has uh, a little bit of waves, it has a interesting rock formation leading the eye uh, through the image and some vegetation in the foreground. So as there's not much wind and the waves are really small, even if you look further away from the beach, I'm probably gonna do this image with a really long exposure and I'll try to do, make it a high key image so the rocks will be the main attention grabbers and I'm gonna just blur out uh, the whole uh, water so let's see how it turns out but I'm gonna try to find the right angle for, for this image and, and then we're gonna talk a bit more about it for this image I'm using a polarizing filter or a Lee circular polarizer to add more reflections to the water because when I'm doing a really long exposure I want uh, there to be more reflections and then the water will be really misty and kind of magical uh, and to get to that long exposure for this image it's about two and a half minutes uh, I'm gonna use Lee six stop ND filter and if that doesn't work I'm gonna use the ten stop but I think six stop uh, will be enough so for me, I can see the image in about two and a half minutes. For you, here's the image. One image down and trying to find another composition here because there's a lot of rocks but 
to find a really nice composition with the rocks, it's um, another story. But anyways, the second thing about shooting without light is that there's a really cool and, and for me not really understandable legend going on that you need to shoot black and white when there is not that much light. For me it's really weird because I have a lot of images that have been shot during a really overcast day they have really nice subdued colors and not that much uh, saturation in them and I really like them because I like to show nature how it is and nature is not black and white if I'm doing cityscapes, uh, architecture, something similar to that black and white can be superb and it can be superb in uh, nature images also but the subject needs to be right and, and everything else around it for me when I need to go over to black and white in nature means that my color image is not good enough and I didn't find a good enough composition with color but I use it from time to time but I will never think about black and white when I'm shooting in nature on location I'll I'll do that switch when I'm on my editing software and I really can't make the image work with the colors. It's so faxing when it's almost sunset and you can't find a comp composition or an image. The third tip or suggestion from me is try really different uh, exposure times for your images for example when it's this kind of uh, overcast day when there's just grey on the sky and nothing else I usually tend to go with uh, longer exposures or like extremely long exposure times for, uh, for my images and uh, that's for a reason then I will blur it out to a single single color or a single gradient basically and when I'm on a beach I will do the same with the water and it kind of paints a uh, canvas for me which is kind of really really nicely goes over from the sea to the sky but when there's the second type of overcast day which is a lot better than this and uh, that's when you have like it's overcast but you still have structure in the sky and there's still a little bit of uh, light coming through it and that's a lot easier, you don't need to mind that that much and you can try different exposures and uh, like uh, faster exposure times in general but experiment with exposures and fast tip 3.1 I'm guessing now because it goes together with the uh, tip number 3 which is about exposures if you do like really long exposure fine arty feeling images it's really nice to get uh, a surreal feel to the image because you know you can look at the sky it's not that interesting you can look at the water at the moment it is not that interesting without the light without reflections without contrast but if you slow time to, down the time and you extend it to you know 30 seconds one minute 10 minutes you can go beyond that's up to you and what you like but it gives it an unearthly feeling of magic and mystic and you don't know what's exactly going on and I really like those kind of images so you know just test it out So the sun is gone and I found my last image for today. Not sure if the image is going to work, but I like the composition and maybe this is actually a composition that I want to come back another time. But at the moment the water is coming in through these two rock formations and I'm trying to get on the uh, streaks of the foam that's on the waves actually 
So let's see how it turns out. Uh, I think it's already too dark to get the, the foam actually or the foam streaks on the water or on the image. But I'll do my best. I'll pump up my ISO a bit and see what I can do. So yeah, uh, I'm at F11. Sorry, no, I'm at F9. I'm at ISO 250 and I'm at about six seconds, I think. Let's try. And then we will find out. I need to time the waves when they will are coming in and I'll try to make the shot when they are going out. And hopefully the next cycle will not come in six seconds. I think I got the image. Uh, I ended up with uh, six seconds. I was at F9. ISO was... Sorry? ISO was 200. And I'm about at 20 millimeters on my lens. And I'm using my 16 to 35 F4 Nikkor at the moment. Hope you like the image. And before I show you the last image of today, don't forget to subscribe and like uh, and comment uh, the video if you like the content and comment anything you want to see in the future or what actually interests you or if you want to know something more about the subject today. So yeah, that's that. But here's the image and see you next time, next week or in a week or two.